Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you guys a really in-depth tutorial on how to contour. Contouring is obviously a really, really big makeup trend. Some people love it, some people hate it. Me personally, I like to sculpt these cheekbones because I was not blessed with them naturally, genetically. So it's really, really a big part of my everyday makeup routine. I just really wanted to take you guys through it really in depth, step by step, make it really easy so that you can not be afraid of doing a full contour. You'll notice when we get into this video I use like so many products, little bits of everything, built it up, left with this really popping result. So if you guys haven't hit subscribe yet, please do, it's somewhere down here, hit the bell so you don't miss any future uploads from me and if you want to see how I snatch these cheekbones then just keep watching. Okay, to start off, I'm going to go in with the e.l.f. Hello Hydration Face Cream. I'm using this just to make sure that my skin is super prepped, so that any makeup I put on top of is going to look really nice. We're going for a really full coverage look today, so it's really easy to make the makeup look like heavy and cakey and dry, but if you've got your skin really well prepped, it's not going to do that. This also has got hyaluronic acid in it. Anything that's got hyaluronic acid in it, I am sold. You need to make sure that your skin is prepped for your makeup to be popping on top. And then just to continue on that hydration kick, I'm going to prime my skin and I'm going to be using the Makeup Revolution Star Primer for that. This is really hydrating so I'm just kind of using it in the outer corners of my face, just the kind of outer perimeter where I want my skin to be as glowy as possible. The only thing I don't like about this primer, which is a shame because it feels so good in the skin, but it smells like licorice and I hate licorice so I just tend to hold my breath when I'm applying it. The overall finish of how it makes your skin look is worth it so I do really, really like that primer and you guys know primers are not my thing this one good and then just through anywhere in my face where I would get a little bit more oily I am going to be using the makeup obsession game set and matte primer this is a mattifying primer that I have been using for a few days now I really like it so I just kind of take that through the t-zone just anywhere that I would get that little bit more shiny they actually sent me this along with the other primers they launched at the same time and their new concealers too there's videos coming up, like, I filmed lots and they're all kind of out of order, but I'm going to show them as well. But thanks for sending me these Obsession, I really like it, and this primer has been, like, the hero so far. I really like that. And then, because we don't have enough hydration already, I'm going to just kind of use the Urban Decay Rebound Prep Spray. It's collagen infused, and I'm just taking that all over my face, just to really set all those primers in place. You guys know that I'm obsessed with this product, I use it every day. I normally do use this at the very beginning, but I kind of forgot, and I still need my boost of collagen for plumpness, firming, radiance boosting, so going with some of that, my skin has been well primed, so it is really important when you're going for filler coverage looks to really make sure your skin is as prepped as possible. The more hydration you put into the skin, the more prep, the nicer that makeup's going to look on top, it's not going to look as heavy, it's not going to look as cakey, it's not going to dry your skin out, it's not going to be as harsh, so really make sure when you're doing these kind of looks that you want to make sure your skin is as prepped as possible. The more glow, the better. For foundation today, I'm going in with the Urban Decay All Nighter. You guys know this is like my favourite foundation of all time. And I am just using that with my, again, favourite foundation brush, which is the Urban Decay Contour Definition. I'm just using that to buff the foundation into my skin. I only used like two pumps of foundation. I didn't want it to be too much. I am just using that and really kind of working it into the skin, making sure I'm getting a really even coverage. And once I'm happy with that, I just kind of go over top and pat it all in. Okay, so starting off with the contour, I'm going to go in with the Makeup Revolution Fast Base Foundation Stick in the shade F13. You guys know this is a favourite of mine. And what I'm just going to do is just really kind of give myself the rough shape where I want to contour. And then using that same foundation brush, I'm just really starting to work that product into my skin. So it's totally up to you if you want to cream contour first or cream conceal first. I like to do my contour first just because it means that I can do my full cream contour at first and then go in with concealer and then I can get it straight in and set that concealer before it's got any time to crease and not have to worry about doing my contour and letting the concealer kind of set in. You know what it's like, the best concealer in the world can crack if you don't set it right away so I like to do that as a last step of my liquids just so that I can get straight in and set everything with powder and then we have no creasing. So I'm really happy with how this is warming up my cheeks. It is really subtle. I really think the trick when you're doing like a really full coverage contour and look especially is to build it up slowly. So a little bit at a time. You do not want go faster stripes on your cheeks of Nike Ticks of cream contour right now. That can come later on. But build up your coverage slowly and you'll get a really even finish. For my concealer, I'm actually going to use two. I'm going to be using the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer along with the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. 
I'm using both concealers in the shade Fair Warm because I want this to be really brightening and I don't mind kind of letting my concealer sit for a second before I blend it out just to gain a little bit extra coverage. The reason why I use two is because I want to use the e.l.f. one for coverage but it is a little bit on the matte side and it's a little bit heavier coverage wise so I'm not taking that all over in the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer is super hydrating and super radiant so I like to use the two mixed together so we get a little bit of the best of both worlds so I just kind of mix and match. Obviously I've taken it from like just where my nose ends right up to my cheekbone, anywhere that we really want to highlight. Don't worry if it looks white at first, when you blend it out into your skin it's really going to look so good. I'm going to grab that little Urban Decay Contour Definition Brush, my favourite foundation brush again, and I'm just going to use that to really start to buff that concealer out. I'm not going to use big swirling motions, it's more of a kind of tap, because I don't want to spread it all over the face and then everything's going to look super pale because it's really going to spread. It's more about kind of patting it into place and using like the side of the brush like you would your beauty sponge and just using all of that product but I'm not moving it all over the face. I'm keeping it where I placed it. I find that sometimes when you're using a beauty sponge as well you can lose a lot of control over your product and having a more dense brush like this is much better because you can really control where you're putting that product. I always at this point just take any excess concealer on my brush and just kind of run it all over my eyelids too. I'm probably going to film an eye look after this so I will go on with my own eye primer but waste not what not when it comes to that product. Are we right? Okay so I'm giving the concealers no time to crease by going straight in with my Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder in the shade Pound Cake. Don't be afraid if you're kicking up dust everywhere at this point. It's just what happens when you're using loose powder. It's not ideal, no. Have I filmed a million videos? using loose powder wearing black and then, and then being like why the hell was I wearing black because I'm covered yes but it's just what happens I really like this powder okay so while my bake bakes I'm going to go in and set the rest of my face I'm using the MAC Studio Fix powder in the shade NC42 and basically anywhere that I haven't put my baking powder I'm going to go in and just really press some Studio Fix powder straight into the skin just to really amplify the coverage and so that I know my makeup is going nowhere today I know this seems like a lot of powder but trust me when we're done it's not going to look super powdery and it's going to actually look super flawless we're going to have a really good glow but your makeup is not going to budge and that is what I love so just bear with me it's going to look really heavy for a while but when we're done it's going to look like skin sculpted to find skin so I do actually really like to leave my bake sitting for a while because I like the under eyes to be super bright and super popping. I'm not going to do tongue pop again. I've done it too much today. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm going to go in and bronze my skin now. Um, I like to just add a little bit more warmth to my skin before I go in and contour. So for that I'm going to of course use my Urban Decay Beached Bronzer. Please don't judge me. This is beat up because I have used it so much and it's hip pan but the product is still great. So let's go with it. One thing I noticed with the bronzer is I'm not like swirling it into the skin, I'm just really pressing it, focusing a lot of my kind of force and like weight of my brush just where I really want the contour to pop to start adding that dimension back into the skin. So basically anywhere that we put that Revolution Cream Contour Stick, we're going to go in and put some bronzer on. So I'm going to just use the other side of my Huda Beauty brush and I'm going to just clean away that bait, I think we've had it cooking for long enough. My under eyes will be looking super bright and really smooth and that is why I like to do the concealer last because I can get straight in and set it and then when I wipe away this bake, everything looks super smooth and <laughs> popping. And I really, really am obsessed with how this is looking so far. Make sure when you're cleaning all your powder that you really take attention to blend between where the bake ended and where your like other powders would be. So I like to just kind of almost slowly pat and rub just so that if there's any difference in texture between the powder here and the powder here, it's going to be blended together. So when we go to add more bronzer on top, when we go to add contour on top, and when we go to of course add highlighter on top, there's not going to be any sort of difference in texture that will then show up when we put more product on top of it and it will cling differently to different areas. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do some contouring. I'm going to be using the MAC Light Medium Studio Fix Sculpt and Shade Contour Palette. The shade that I'm going to use first of all is this middle one here which is called Sculpt. I'm going to actually use my favourite contour brush which is the Morphe R14 which I know looks more like a foundation or powder brush. I don't know if you guys can see really clearly but it's kind of domed. 
when I first seen this I thought it was like a brush for just setting powder and then I seen a few videos of people using it online and I thought oh my god that looks really nice for contouring and I tried it and at first I put it back and I was like no back to the angle brush and then I tried it again and I fell in love with it so that was one of the reasons why I really wanted to film a contour video because I really feel like I'm getting back into the flow of like loving doing a full contour again after a while of neglecting my contoured roots and doing all about that bronze life. Like we can still be bronzy but we can be a little bit more snatched and that is what we're doing today. So I'm going to go in and take the shade Sculpt which is this middle shade here and I'm going to just use that to start to sculpt my cheekbones. Hence the name. <laughs> I don't know if I've used this in the video before, I can't remember. I do really like this. Mark got me it for Christmas and at first, when I first seen it, I thought, oh my god, the colours in this palette look really, really, like, grey and they're not dark enough. And I really, at one point, was going to swap it for the, like, medium dark one. And he was like, you're not allowed to swap for the medium dark one. It's far too dark for you. Um, but I really like the formula of this because it's really lightweight. Again, you'll notice I'm doing a lot of patting. And then once I place the colour down, just kind of tickling the edges so that we're not getting a harsh line. And just kind of pressing it against the cheekbones. Always start from the back of the cheekbone where you want the hollow to look as defined. And then slowly kind of as you're coming forward, lighten up the pressure you're putting on your brush so that it's heavier here and a little bit lighter as you come forward. Never bring your brush down when you're contouring. You always want to kind of push it slightly upwards so that we're really pressing it into the natural hollows of the cheeks. Or in my case, where you want those natural hollows to be. And just take your time with this. You don't want to be doing a heavy line of contouring that you physically can't blend out. We've all been there. I actually been there last week. Had it on my story on Instagram. Have any of you guys seen it? I don't think I saved it. And I, if I did, I'll put it here, but I think I wanted it gone. And then I've got no extra product on my brush. I've just got what's left. And I'm going to just kind of scoop the nose. You guys know that I used to love taking, like, forever contouring my nose. And, like, realistically, it just looked like two lines down my nose. What was I thinking? Well, actually, I loved it. So I'm not going to slag it. But just kind of take it all the way up the nose, right up to where your brows meet. Because you're going to carve it with powder anyway, so it can be a little bit liney at the first. And then I like to just take... And then I like to just flip over to this shade Bone Beige, which is a darker one. It's not much darker, but I like to just kind of really pat that right in at the tips of the cheeks. You'll notice how little product I'm using. I don't want this to be a heavy contour by any means. I want it to still look just like I've got naturally popping cheekbones. I feel like we went through a phase where we weren't liking the contour as much, but it's definitely due a comeback and I am here for it. Okay, so I actually found another brush that I forgot I had, and this is the contouring brush by e.l.f. It's kind of long, thin, and flat, and they sent me this ages and ages ago, and I was like, who is going to contour with this? Not me, but I found a use for it, because, like I said, I'm really trying to cut back on my beauty sponge consumption. Well... How else could you carve out your contour? This brush is the one. So I'm just going to go with a little bit more of that Huda Beauty powder and I'm just going to carve out the bottom of my contour. And then I'm also going to do the same just down the sides of the nose. Okay, so once you've had that sitting for a while, you can kind of start cleaning everything up. When you're cleaning away the powder, you want to kind of use little circular motions and almost push it up into the contour so that you get a really nice fade. And you'll notice that doing that does kind of really bring that back into action and gives your cheeks that really like pushed in hollow sculpted skinny bitch realness contour that we're all wanting in life right and then I always like to at this point just take my powder brush that I use with that studio fix powder to set not taking any extra product and I just want to go over the edges to make sure that everything is really blended into the skin and there's no like stopping abruptly of that contour powder because that is a dead giveaway and we want everything to look really kind of blended well really pushed into the skin and really as natural as you can get for a full coverage contour and i'm saying that because realistically it isn't natural looking but we're making it look as natural as we can right okay so what i like to do now is just take a little bit of my original beached bronzer and i just kind of feather that over the edges of my contour using a like fluffier brush 
like a kind of winter blush or whatever and just make sure that we've got a really nice balance between the cool tone contour powder and the warm bronzer to make sure everything's really balanced and the skin just looks really sculpted with no dead giveaways of like missed parts of product and then using that same brush i'm going to go in with a little bit of blusher the blusher that i'm using is mac sunbask which is just a little bit of a more kind of bronzy blush with a slight shimmer i didn't really want to do like a blusher look but i always like to have something a little bit less matte and a little bit more of a kind of pearlescent finish almost just to start that base off and go over the edges of the contour it means when i put highlighter on top we're not going to have like a stripey highlighter blending against a matte surface so i like to have something with a little bit of a kind of shimmery finish to it just to get that glow going and that way we're going to get a really nice even finish and add a little bit of radiance to the skin this one is my favorite blusher i use it all the time it just looks so good on all skin tones if i do so myself <laughs> So now I'm going to go in with some MAC Fix Plus and I'm going to do my favourite step in my makeup routine every day. I like to affectionately call this step the soak because it does what it says in the tin. I'm going to completely soak my face to melt all the powders into the skin so that everything looks really skin-like and really well blended but also so that when I put highlighter on top of the makeup it's going to go on really intense, really blinding and really... Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Really, really, really... Popping. And that's what we want, isn't it? So I'm going to just drench my face in the MAC Fix Plus and then get into highlighter. I do like to keep the Fix Plus on the kind of outskirts of the face because that's where we spent the most time building up our like cream contour, powder contour, bronzer, blusher. The centre of the face I've kept pretty much untouched because that is the area that me personally would get a little bit more oily in so we don't really have to worry about making that bit a little bit wetter. Just the two kind of outside areas of the face but when I say I make them wet I literally do soak them so <laughs> wait and see. For my highlighter, I'm going in with my favourite highlighter of all time, which is the So Hollywood by Anastasia Beverly Hills. I don't think you can get this anymore, but I have mine, so I am going to use it. I like to just take it right up the cheekbone at first, and then take a little bit just over the arch of my brows. Sometimes I'll take it like all the way around, but I actually think I get a better finish when I leave this area here a little bit less highlighted because it creates the illusion of more contour. And what I sometimes will do as well is take my contour brush with no extra product and just make sure that this bit here has got contour, not highlight, because it's going to, again, really create the illusion of that like popping, lifted, fillered cheek that we're not getting and then on a little pencil brush i like to just take a little bit on the tip of my nose that's a lot but i'll blend that away and a little bit just down the center of my nose as well and that will give us that really nice highlighted nose now once you've got the highlighter down obviously this is looking a little bit crazy and a little bit intense and i don't like to tone my highlighter down too much but again, I do like to make sure that it looks blended into the skin and doesn't look like a big stripe of highlighter just sitting on my cheekbone. That might have been cute like five, six years ago, but it's not now. So again, that little fluffy brush that I used for like my bronzer, blusher, like my kind of, I like to keep this as my kind of face blending brush and just going back over everything. If I need to add a little bit more blusher or bronzer, I will do that as well, just to make sure that the edges are as feathered as possible. It's all about kind of going back and forward when you're doing this just to make sure that everything looks as blended and as kind of pressed into the skin as possible. You want it to look obviously super popping but you don't want it to look like ridiculous. And again just go over the edges in the centre of the face where I want to stay a little bit more matte and just make sure we're using that to push out the highlighter so that it's not sitting like a big undefined stripe on the face because we're not doing that right now. Then I'm going to go in with another highlighter. This is the Double Gleam Extra Dimension Skin Finish by MAC. This, I don't know if I've used this in my channel, but I love this highlighter because it literally is that little bit extra that makes your skin look super, super popping. And it is honestly blinding. It is my favourite highlighter for... Like, I couldn't use this all over because I am not fair enough if you were fair you could if you were really fair this could be a really nice alternative to the yellow gold highlighters but you'll see just taking that like right on the tips it just adds that little bit extra and makes your face a little bit more 
So to set my makeup in place, obviously I'm going to go in with my favourite, favourite, favourite setting spray. It is the only setting spray that I use because in my opinion it is the best one out there. So I'm going to of course go in with my Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I'm going to spray my face to lock it in place and of course as usual I'm going to use far, far, far too much. Don't judge me, I like to be excessive with my setting spray. Sorry about it, but I'm actually not. Okay, so now my makeup is set in place and going nowhere. I'm sure you agree. This looks super snatched, super popping, and yeah, really, really like it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump off camera and do my brows. I'm going to do a quick eye look, and I will meet you back here for the finished look. Six hours later. Okay, there we have it, guys. That is the finished look. I have went full beat on the eyes thanks for waiting if you want to see how i did this eye look i'll actually link it down below because i filmed that too and it will be up already by the time you guys are watching this video and yeah let me know what you guys think of this full contour look is it something you're going to try at home what is your top tip for contouring i would love to know um yeah if you've got any questions in this video then leave them below i'll happily answer them if you haven't hit subscribe then you might as well because I would really, really like to get to 3K on YouTube and it is in sight if it hasn't already happened by the time the video goes live. So yeah, if you haven't hit subscribe, please, 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 please hit subscribe below. If you like this video, let me know what you think. Do you like when I do more kind of like educational videos and take you guys through like how to do makeup step by step? A few people have asked for that in the past, so I thought I would try it out today, but I would like to know if you guys like that or you prefer more like hauls or be on a budget. New one coming soon or maybe up already i can't decide what order i'm going to post them in and um, if you guys like to see product reviews or if you really like to see how to do makeup step by step because i think we forget that not everyone knows how to do their makeup and it's sometimes nice just to break it down a little bit i really enjoyed filming it so if you guys liked watching it let me know because i can definitely do more of these and um, you can always catch up with me on my other social medias they will be linked in the usual place somewhere up here and yeah thank you so much for watching i will see you next time Goodbye!